My prayer this morning is, is that during this season, our faith will be strengthened in the knowing about the baby Jesus, the crucified God, and our risen Savior. How's your faith today on this beautiful Sabbath morning? How's your faith, Jeannie? Jeannie had a pole run into her car this week, destroyed it. So, but she's here, praise the Lord. We all have different levels of faith, but we all have faith. You trusted your legs to hold you up this morning as you scrambled to the bathroom. You had faith that the other drivers would stay in their lane as you drove to church this morning, or in Rodney's case, that they'd stay off the sidewalk as he came here. But that's not the kind of faith I want to talk about with you this morning. How's your faith in Jesus and his promises? There's dead faith. James says that faith without works is dead. There's demonic faith. James also said that demons believe and shudder at the name of Jesus. There's vain faith, there's saving faith, there's a faith that convicts, there's little faith, and there's great faith. We all have different degrees of faith. Is faith important? Can you be saved without it? Let's start with the inconvenience of little faith. Faith starts small, but it's like a grain of mustard seed. Jesus said, mustard seed was the least of all seeds. But as the Holy Spirit blesses it, with the moisture of grace, it germinates and grows, and at last it becomes a large plant. This is kind of how faith starts in your soul. It is simple like looking to Jesus. But even as you look, sometimes you're filled with doubt. Our eyes are so dim, we need the light from the Holy Spirit to see the cross. When faith grows a little, it goes from looking to Christ to kneeling before him. We who stand way back and looked at the cross soon get the courage and run to the cross. If not run, we limp or crawl. Then your faith gets stronger. You, when your faith gets stronger, you lay hold of Christ. You begin to see him as your real savior. Soon you give all your burdens, your cares, your sorrows, your griefs to Jesus and he drowns them in the sea of his blood. First you see Jesus, then you run or crawl to him, then you hold him, and soon you lean on him for everything. This, my friends, is faith, and there is no sweeter place to be. Remember at the beginning, faith is very small. There are some Christians who never get out of little faith all their lives. So what's the inconvenience of little faith? Even though heaven is assured, often little faith doesn't know it. Because after all, he only has a little faith. Let me assure you, when Jesus returns and counts his jewels, he will take little pearls, great pearls, all pearls. Even when a diamond is very small, it is still precious because after all, it's still a diamond. Just like faith, even if it is very little, if it's true faith, Jesus will honor it. Little faith is assured of heaven because the name little faith 
is in the book of eternal life. Little faith was bought with the blood of Jesus and cost the same amount as great faith. Little faith is always sure of heaven because when God began, began a good work in him, he will carry it through. Little fa faith has a mansion in heaven and is always safe. The inconvenience in little faith, he seldom knows all this. If you meet him, if you meet him, he might be afraid of hell. He's often afraid of God's wrath. He wonders if God really lives in his heart. He feels unworthy. He wonders if God, he wonders if God's word is always true. He feels his faith is so weak, he couldn't possibly hold on in the end times. Can I possibly persevere? If you kill a thousand doubts today, by tomorrow, he'll have several more. Unbelief is something you cannot destroy with little faith. I'm going to read that again. Unbelief is something you cannot destroy with little faith. Unbelief is as, has as many lives as a cat. You can kill it over and over again, and yet it still lives. Now, great faith is sure of heaven. He climbs to the top of the mountain and views the landscape. He drinks from the mysteries of heaven, even before he enters the pearly gates. He sees the streets paved with gold. He beholds the walls of the city, the foundations of precious stones. He hears the music of the saved. He even smells the perfume of heaven. Sadly, little faith can't hardly look up, can't hardly see the light. He lives in the valley. Even though he is safe, he feels unsafe. That is just a few of the disadvantages of little faith. He doesn't know if he had enough grace. He doesn't know if he had enough grace through Jesus Christ who says, my grace is sufficient for you. Do I have enough faith to get to heaven? I assure the greatest faith saints will enter heaven with empty wallets. He will have eaten his last morsel of bread. Remember the manna stopped when the children of Israel entered Canaan. If you see little faith in prosperity, he's afraid he'll die from pride. If he's attacked by an enemy, he can't scarcely say three words for himself and lets the enemy take what he wants from him. He can do little for God because God's grace will not be sufficient for him. Great faith, on the other hand, can shake the world. What cares does great faith have about, have about troubles and trials? He would face an army single-handedly if that's what God commanded. With the jawbone of a donkey, he would pile, thousand, pile up thousands of his enemies. He can do all things because the Lord is there. Come what may, God's arm is always sufficient for him. Little faith has great strength also, but doesn't know it. It's an inconvenience to have little faith because it perverts everything into sorrow and grief. Often, when little faith is tempted, he falls. Strong faith can battle with the enemy. Satan comes along and says, all things I'll give you if you fall down and worship me. Great faith says, no, you can't give me these things. They're not yours to give. The devil says, you're poor, you're naked, you're miserable. And great faith says, these things are good for me. Without earthly goods, I depend more on God who gives me everything. Oh, the devil says, you have no place in heaven. 
Serve me, and I'll give you silver and make you happy. I want you to remember this. You will walk on gold. God has a thousand times the reward for obedience than the old devil has for disobedience. The good news for little faith is they sometimes are less apt to fall than others because they are very cautious, carefully putting one foot ahead of the other. They're very afraid to fall into sin. I like these kind of people. Sometimes a little faith holds tighter to Christ than any others. A man who is drowning holds tightly to the plank and even tighter when he starts to drown. Careful walking is not a result of little faith. It may go together though, and little faith is a dangerous thing. It leaves us open to many temptations and takes away our strength to resist sin. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And if that joy stops you from becoming weak and apt to sin, have joy. Us children of the King should rejoice in the Lord always. No, I'm not done, Ray. You can stay seated. It's okay. I wouldn't leave you without telling you about great faith. I'm going to tell you a story. It's a true story. It happened to me in 2016, not that long ago. My dear mother had been living with my wife and I. Some of her most memorable years, dear. Isn't that right? Yeah. And she lived with us for two years. She was 95, 96. She died when she was 97 years old. But her last year of life, she moved to be with her daughter in South Carolina. So she has moved and well settled in. And I got a phone call. I was still in California. I got a phone call. Hi, Mom. How are you? How's it going today? Well, Jim, um, the doctor just left my room, and he said I have congestive heart failure, and I'll be dead in a couple hours. So before I die, I want to sing with you the first song I ever taught you when you were a boy. Okay, Mom. Let's do it. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And then my mother did what most all mothers do. She had some marching orders for me. She goes, Jim, so when you get to heaven, this is what I want you to do. I want you to look for me. I'll be close to Jesus. I'll be on the right-hand side, sitting right up front. I want you to come find me first. Yes, Mom. I love you. Goodbye. This, my friends, is the benefit of great faith. Let's talk about how to strengthen your faith. It must be fed well. Faith feeds on grace. It does not ask you to give it the things you cannot see. You can see. It asks you to give you understanding of the things you cannot see, which are eternal. To have great faith, give meditation to God's word. Carry a sacred text or promise with you every day. If you don't meditate on God's word every day, soon you'll have unbelief. If you do meditate on God's word, grace will find you and you will be filled with belief. Find a promise every day. Write it down. Learn it by memory if possible. Digest it. Some of us Christians feel it is our duty to read a chapter or more every morning without understanding it at all. Take out one choice text, break it up in your mind, ask God to bring it to you often and better understand it. Look at it like a fruit tree full of fruit. Shake it 
and a catch a piece of fruit as it falls, eat it up and be comforted with the joy of the Lord. There is great comfort in each promise of God. Prove the promise, and at the same time, your faith will be strengthened. If you're in distress, under pressure, discouraged, sick, take a promise. See if it's true. Isaiah 41.10, fear not, for I am with you. Deuteronomy 31.6, be strong and of good courage. Suppose you're hungry, thirsty, Isaiah 33, 16. Your bread and water will be sure. Find different ways to prove God's promises are true. Do like the old woman did. She put T and P throughout the, her Bible, next to numerous promises. When asked what T and P next to Bible promises meant, she simply said, tried and proved. When she was distressed, she picked up her Bible and looked for the T's and P's, and she became filled with belief. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. Take that and prove it. Prove that it really works. There is nothing in the world that confirms faith better than proof. When you need, what you need are facts to make you a believer. The older you grow, the stronger your faith should be because you have more facts. Here I am close to 70, and if I would have taken better notes, there would be such great evidence it would prove God's goodness and long, long suffering and kindness. It should make us all believers. So now us old hair, old hair folks, and Lamont, old hair, white folk, haired folks, sorry, should have great faith and bear testimony to God's faithfulness. Is there one promise that God has not kept? Now those of you who are young in age or in faith will soon be strong in years to come. Every instance of God's love makes us stronger believers and doers. God has been faithful in the past, he is faithful now, and he will be faithful in the future. 1 Corinthians 1.9, 1 John 1.12, and at least 30 other verses tell us about God's faithfulness, not to mention our own personal testimonies. Sadly, we forget and our faith starts to dwindle and we forget God's repeated promises and answers. Here's another way to strengthen your faith. And here in this church, it should be quite easy. Associate yourself with godly, strong Christians. Young Christians should be encouraged and strengthened by older Christians. Here's an example. Young Christian says, I'm afraid I'm not a child of God. I'm in distress. I have bad thoughts. If I'm a child of God, I should never feel this way. Old Christian smiles and says, you have not gone far on the road to heaven or else you would know better. Yes, you will have doubts and discouragements, but hold on. Our God has great strength when you're weak. He has fullness when you feel empty. And as you testify of God's love, you're strengthening your own faith also. Perhaps the only way for, for okay, perhaps the only way for some to strengthen their faith is through trouble. Is that true? We don't go strong in faith <clears throat> only on sunny days. It's in the bad weather <clears throat> when some men gain strength. Faith is not attained when it's 
dropped from heaven like gentle dew. It generally comes in a whirlwind or big storm. The big oak did not get strong in gentle breezes or soft rain. It was the blasting wind and torrential storm that made it send its roots deep into the earth. So it is with us. You soldiers didn't become strong at home on a couch watching TV. It was in the field dodging bullets or driving a truck in uniform or hard book learning about the ways of war. It's the pain of hard work that makes you strong. Sailors see the work of the Lord and the wonders of the deep when the winds blow and the storm is high and the tempest roll. So with Christians, great faith must have great trials. Now that we have great faith, you must exercise what you have. The builder's arm aches when he starts out framing with that heavy hammer lifting heavy walls, but soon after work, these muscles, you become strong and you get used to it. Do you want great faith? Use it. God will give you more strength and faith as you use it. Strong faith must be an exercised faith. Remember the story of the talents in Matthew 25 don't lose the one talent you don't use. It's true, works won't save you, but faith without works is dead. Faith with works helps you gain, become, grow strong and become a stable person. Go teach in a Sabbath school, go visit the poor, bring something needed to the poor old lady in her humble dwelling. Go share Jesus in the back streets of our city, and I promise you'll say how wonderful, refreshing it is to be about God's business and doing something. Hopefully, these suggestions are helpful. But here is the best and foolproof, proven way to strengthen your faith. Communicate with Christ. You cannot be an unbeliever and communicate with God. Even when you walk in the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus will lead you to green pastures and you will rest by still waters. It is important to look at Christ in the face. It is impossible to look at Christ in his face and doubt him. Did I say it right? It is impossible to look at Christ in the face and doubt him. The benefits of having great faith are immeasurable. When you're down, most all Christians will experience painful doubts regardless of your faith power. But it's wonderful to have the acceptance of Jesus as sure as your own existence. What a blessing to say, I know who I'm, I believe and am persuaded that Jesus is willing and able to hold me tight. Amen. When the storms come, and they will, you always find shelter and drink with Jesus. When the heat is on, Jesus Christ is a rock that provides a cooling shade. Throw your anchor deep, and when the winds blow, you'll get a good night's sleep. Christ is at the helm when you let him. Though the earth be removed and the mountains be cast to the sea, you will not fear, for God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in the time of trouble. Psalms 46. You can know with a certainty that on your very last day, you are clothed in Christ's righteousness. I can look at you boldly and I look into your face and I can tell you that Christ is able to keep you strong if only you commit your way to him. 
Victory is yours in Christ. This is the effect of strong faith. I'm asking you today to cast yourself on Christ. He is worthy of your trust. He invites you to dine with him. He's, inter he's interceding for you right now. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Acts 16, 31. Jesus, thank you for this time we have to celebrate the one, the only God who loves us, died for us, rose again, and now lives to save us. We pray that you'll be with us as we go our separate ways, Lord. And may we all have a great Christ day. We pray in your name. Amen.